אנחנו מוצאים את הצפון וראשים שוהים? סגולה בדוקה. האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? הסגולה ללמוד בזה? Before we get started with tonight's share, I just want to wish a heartfelt mazel tov to Rabbi and Rebbitz and Svi Khan on the birth of their first grandchild to their son Avi and his wife Hadassah Khan. If you Google Avi Khan and Gaza, you will see incredible stories of how he was hastily evacuated from serving with the IDF in Gaza to be at the birth of their first child. The beautiful little boy was named Yair bin Yamin, and we wish Avi and Hadassah a heartfelt mazel tov, as well as all the grandparents, uncles, and aunts. We can't wait for Rabbi Khan to resume his amazing weekly Zera Shimshon share that I hope I didn't disgrace too badly. Erev Tov, good evening, Dobre Vietcher. This is the Zera Shimshon on Parshas Vayigash. We're going to do Os Yud, which is chapter 10, and it's really going to be a very enjoyable piece. Um, we're going to explain something that I don't think any of us thought needed explanation. Uh, let's first start with our Pasek. The Yeser Yosef Merkavto and Yosef harnessed his chariot, Vial Gras Yisrael Aviv Goshna, and he went to meet his father Yisrael in Goshen, Vayera Elav, and Yosef appeared before him. He appeared before him. Yosef appeared before Yaakov. Vayipo Al Tzivarav, Yosef fell on his neck, uh, al od, and he cried on his neck a lot. So this is the Pasuk we're going to take a look at. The, the important uh, phrase is Vayera Elav, that he appeared before him. Uh, let's take a look. So Rashi, the Zer Shimshon is going to bring the Rashi on this Pasuk that says that Yaakov did not greet Yosef when they first met because Yaakov was saying Shema. So the Zer Shimshon raises some issues with this. The Zer Shimshon raises a few issues with this, considering that this had been the first time that the two had seen each other for 22 years. So the Pasuk we saw, V'yera Elav, V'yipo al Tzivarav. And the Pasuk says, Yosef appeared to Yaakov and he fell on Yaakov's neck and he wept. Um, the Pusik speaks of, of, again, Yosef greeting Yaakov, but it doesn't mention that Yaakov greeted Yosef. So the Zer Shimshon is going to explain. Perish Rashi, Aval Yaakov, lo nafal al tzivar Yosef. That Rashi explains that the reason Yaakov did not fall on Yosef's neck, v'lo nishako, and he didn't kiss Yosef, l'fi shahaya kora es shma. It was because Yaakov was saying shma at that time. Makshem ha'olam. The whole world asks, Lama dafka kara Yaakov es Shema be'esahi? Why would Yaakov recite Shema precisely at that moment? Shehaya yodea she Yosef ba'elav. Because Yaakov knew that Yosef was coming after so many years, he was coming to meet him. Fi'i tema she'az dafka ba'oso ha'es ha'ya hazman le'kros kevatsikim. So if you want to say that Yaakov was saying Shema at that moment because it was Vasikin, and we know that Vasikin is the ideal time to say Shema, Kasha al Yosef. Then we have a difficulty regarding Yosef. Why? Lama lo karo afhu ba'asahi. Why wasn't Yosef reciting Shema at that moment if it was the ideal time to do the mitzvah? The Zerah Shimshon asks even further, explaining why we can't say that Yaakov did not greet Yosef because he was in the middle of saying Shema when Yosef arrived, and so he didn't notice him. We can't say that. Va'od Kasha, it's difficult to say that Yaakov started Shema before Yosef arrived because of the following. For the simple reading of the Pusik, it seems that Yaakov saw Yosef upon his arrival. Demichsev v'yera elav. It says that Yosef made himself aware, made himself, uh, presented himself, appeared before Yaakov. Mashma she Yaakov ra'oso, it implies that Yaakov saw Yosef, the Elav hachi. So if you say that Yaakov didn't notice Yosef upon his arrival because he was already in the middle of saying Shema, lo ase shaper halash and shell, vayera elav. Then the Pusik saying Yosef appeared before Yaakov is inaccurate. The Imkain al Karchach Lomar. Therefore, we have to say that although Yosef arrived before Yaakov started Shema, and Yaakov had indeed seen Yosef enter, 
Shemiachi Yaakov Ra Oso. Nevertheless, as soon as Yaakov saw Yosef, Hischil Lakros Es Shema, he began to recite Shema. Vizetema, obviously, this is this is a problem, right? Why would Yaakov begin to recite Shema at the exact moment of Yosef's arrival? And he, he didn't greet him, didn't hug him, didn't fall on his neck, didn't cry with him. Vagamein Lomar, and it's also not possible to suggest Yaakov Nasa Einav Vera Oso. The Emsa Hakriya Shema, that Yaakov had already started saying Shema before Yosef's arrival. And when Yosef arrived, Yaakov merely lifted up his eyes and saw Yosef in the middle of him saying Shema. We can't say that. Why? Shehare Sod Hakriya Shema Hu Biskiro De'enim. Because according to the Kabbalists, the Kabbalistic manner for reciting Shema is to cover one's eyes with your hand. Rabbi Feiner explains that each of our fingers serves a different purpose, and that when we cover our eyes with our hands, each finger is shielding our eyes from a different thing that we're not supposed to see. I don't remember what they were now, but I'll try to actually find that because it was very interesting. So we can't say, so, so when Yosef came in, he he made himself. Uh, um, he made Yaakov aware of his presence. So Yaakov knew when Yosef came in. So we can't say that he was in the middle of Shema, but he looked up during Shema because his eyes are closed. So we still don't have an answer as to why Yaakov was saying Shema at that time and why he didn't return the greeting. So Yaakov certainly would not have noticed Yosef if he was in the middle of Shema. So the fact that the Pusik says, uh, Vayare love, that he did see Yosef, we, we still have a problem is, why would he say Shema at that moment? And if he did see him, why wouldn't he greet him? So this is where it just completely goes into orbit. The Zer Shimshon explains Yaakov's conduct based on the Kabbalistic interpretation of the first verse of Shema. Let's check this out. This, that Yaakov started saying Shema the moment Yosef arrived, can be understood according to the, what the Kabbalists write, and he quotes Kavanis Harizal regarding the Kabbalistic meaning of Shema. She Shema, the first two letters of the first word of Shema is Shin and Mem. The Echad, and the first two letters of the last word, Shema Yisrael Shem Alekinu Shem Echad, the first two letters of the word echad is aleph and ches. So you have shin and mem and aleph and ches. The first two letters of the first word, the first two letters of the last word. It's according to the Arizal, heim osios esmach, that these four letters comprise the word esmach, meaning I will rejoice. Vidalad rabasai and the large dalid of echad, romeis la arba imos. The large dalit of the word echad is the gematria four, which is referring to the arba imos, the ayin rabasi, and the large ayin of shma uh, romes legimel avos. So, the, it, according to the Rizal, the ayin of the word shma has the gematria of seventy, which he's going to explain hints to Avraham Yitzchak and Yaakov as follows: Avraham is chesed. Okay, he personifies the meat of, of chesed. Ayin Gesharim Shal Chesed. It corresponds to the 70 bridges of kindness. Yitzchak is Din. Yitzchak personified the Mida of justice. Ayin Sanhedrin corresponds to the 70 ju judges of Sanhedrin who render legal cases, legal, legal opinion. Behem Sod Ha'ayin Zakanim. And it also refers to, Kabbalistically, to the 70 elders of Moshe's era. Yaakov, Ayin Nefesh, Yotze Yurecho. The number 70 corresponds to Yaakov. Why? Because Yaakov had a total of 70 people, 70 descendants with him in Egypt. Ad Khan Lashono. So this is where the quote from the Arizal ends. Va'ad Oso Shalo Ra'a Yaakov, Ayin Nefesh, Kulam Biachad. Therefore, we can explain that until the moment that Yosef came to greet Yaakov, and Yaakov first sees him, that was the first time all 70 of Yaakov's family were together. So now you have the shlemus of the ayin of Yaakov. Umeata Shiba Yosef Etzlo. So now that Yosef comes to him, this Yachdu call Hashivim, all 70 were together. 
Therefore, as soon as Yaakov saw Yosef, the Pusik says he, he saw him. He began to recite Shema. Why? In order to complete Yaakov's rectification and unification incumbent upon him, as indicated by the ayin, as it as it pertains to Yaakov's 70, 70 family members that came with him, um, and uh, as it relates to the ayin of Shema. So Yaakov did indeed see Yosef when he arrived, as the Pasuk clearly says, and Yaakov had not begun to say Shema until he saw ya- uh, Yosef. However, it was the very sight of Yosef that inspired him to recite the Shema because he realized that that was the moment that his ayin of the of the three avos, which were all represented by the word ayin in different ways, Yaakov's representation of ayin was his 70 family members, which were now complete when he put his eyes on Yosef. And that was the moment that he had to recite Shema to complete his the dogma of his ayin. Thank you guys very much for putting up with a substitute teacher. And we are all looking forward to Rabbi Khan returning next week to uh, learn next week's uh, Zerushim Shem.